Yeah. Okay. And he will be talking about Muhammad Bahmat Beji. Yes. And the pastor education in Iran. This is very interesting area for us because the Iranian and Eastern type of education is not that very much viewed and presented in the professional mm -hmm. literature. So we would be Thank listening you. to you with great pleasure, sir. So you've got time until uh, 1455, which is 15 minutes. All right. Please do keep the time. All Thank right. you. Over to you. Would you and like me to help you with the computer? Or you prefer to be? So, right. 25. 25 minutes, yeah. 25, 25 minutes. minutes. And, and I will have, show. Yeah, I, will, uh, yes. I, I think I, I need only 15 minutes. Okay. okay. But if I exceed my time, okay. please, please uh, let me know. Uh, so I will uh, I would be able to summarize. Thank you, everybody. I am uh, glad to be here. This is the second time that I uh, uh, am here. The last time I was uh, uh, last year, I had a presentation on uh, plagiarism in, uh, and uh, commodification of education in Iran. This is a very good conference. Uh, there have been many conferences, uh, international conferences. The organization of this conference is wonderful. I think uh, many scholars like me will uh, be planning to come here again uh, for the next uh, uh, years. I am Esan Shalasimi from uh, Professor of Communication at the University of Tehran, and uh, my presentation is titled Muhammad Bahman Began Pastoral Education in Iran. This is the second time that I uh, bring up uh, uh, this subject. The first time was in 2010, I uh, first introduced this, uh, 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 this project. Uh, the project is, uh, was already known to, to people, but uh, first, the first time that I did this issue uh, was brought in the brought up in, in a conference was by 2010 in a conference in uh, Saint Petersburg in uh, in Russia. And I'm planning to do more systematic works by the coming years uh, if I can do my, my uh, you know, meeting and my uh, responsibilities as a you know, university professor. Uh, this is this is a project that uh, you know it, it took only two or three decades in Iran's contemporary era, but it had a very tremendous effect on how Iranian people are living today. Unfortunately, this project has been underrepresented because of the reasons that I will uh, delineate at the end of this presentation. Uh, the fact that you know, the first. Uh, Colonialists, uh, during the colonial era, uh, colonialists wanted to drain you know, more efficiently the, the resources of the third world countries. In order to do so, they needed experts. Experts are coming out from universities. They were educated in universities. The universities are, are calm or have a peaceful environment. So when they get the first, uh, get into the uh, of <coughs> India, uh, they were horrified by saying how people were living in their own people, people's life were, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in misery, people were very uh, poor, people had nothing, they tried to do something. They were uh, educated people, they were kind people, uh, and they wanted to do something uh, for them. But their salary, uh, their salary was, was limited, and the number of poor people were huge, so they came to the conclusion that if somebody is going to do something about these people, uh, this would, this, this need, there needs to be a systematic work. So they tried to introduce, for example, ways of, of better cropping or, you know, uh, or, or, you know, better living or, you know, healthcare systems, a preliminary, preliminary version of healthcare systems. But to their surprise, people resisted it. They tried to help people, but people resisted because of many, many uh, reasons. Some of them are still unknown. So they came to the conclusion that there is an in the head variable. There is an in the head impediment that must be removed. There is something in people's mind uh, that, that makes them uh, resist against any effort to, to alleviate their problems. Uh, and this was the beginning of the literature on communication for development. First of all, if you want to take a, a new development, 
uh, to a third world country, first and foremost, you need to communicate the idea, make the idea acceptable. And Iran was also a colonized country and a poor country like many other countries in like your country. Uh, and uh, you know, we see that, for example, in uh, 150 years ago, the Iranian king, Nasser bin Shahrukh, uh, wrote a secret letter to the uh, uh, president of the United States. And yeah, the secret full of grammatical and lexical errors. <laughs> yes. And, and you know, naively, he lamented that, that not only Russia and Britain uh, drain or, or countries, drain or resources, they also ban any effort to import science or knowledge to our country. So, please keep this letter secret, as, as, as secret between us. You can come here, he naively said, you can come here and colonize us, provided that you bring your knowledge here. You know, the, the need for knowledge, uh, they, they, they righteously found that, that the, the Solution to problems is not in fighting with uh, a direct fight, fight with, with colonialists, it, it was in education. And uh, this was the project of Muhammad Dahan. He was uh, born in 1919, about 100 years ago, to a pastoral family in South Iran, in Kashkai tribe. Uh, and then he was a small child, the Iranian king. Uh, he was from a noble family, the Iranian king exiled his family uh, to Tehran because uh, the king wanted them to wanted to keep them under close surveillance. Uh, so so he wanted to make sure that no further riots would happen because these these people were you know uh, they were mobile. They, they lived not nowhere you know in the winters they came to the lowlands. Oh, my country is a very very mountainous country. They came to the lowlands. And in the summers, they came, they went to the highlands. They were living in tents, so they were ready all the time. They were ready to, uh, to you know, to participate, to incite another riot. And this was good for this uh, young child, because in Tehran, he was, uh, he had the privilege of receiving modern education. He, in the, in the school, he showed uh, extraordinary talent, as I will, uh, uh, Delineate again in this presentation, and uh, then after the World War the Second, the Iranian Shah fell, and the Allied forces occupied Iran and exiled him to Africa. So in the turbulence, he and his families, his family and friends, uh, were able to escape Iran and, and went back to their pastoral life in uh, southern part of Iran. But this time he was a BA graduate in law. At this time he was young and he was a BA graduate. He had he could have a, a very good uh, future. Yeah, he was clever. He was graduated from the university. He was able to speak two or three languages: French, German, and English. Uh, but he decided something else. He was a special kind of person. He decided to stay and uh, you know uh, dedicate his life uh, to his own tribe. Uh, you know that the, the, I'm coming from the, that region. I'm from another tribe. Uh, they are Turks. They are Persian. Uh, but but you know I I have uh, read. I have heard narratives of, of how living in Iran was at that time. Elderly, you know, some of them are still not alive. Uh, living condition was in Iran was very horrible at that time. And, uh, that, that was why Muhammad Bahman, when he was started thinking about how he could be helpful in, in solving problems and making, uh, you know, removing flight of the Iranian, removing hunger, removing starvation in his own region. And during 1950s, he was still, you know, in his 30s, he came to the conclusion that all uh, uh, the prop that he famously said that the key to all problems lies in the art alphabet. He came to the conclusion that that uh, experts of the colonialists had been coming to uh, 100 years before. That there was an in the head variable, the, 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 you know, a communicative variable that could be overcome by by educating people, and uh, uh, we will come back to education. Let me. Uh, tell you about his own life. 
Mamata and Lady married two times, first time uh, he was married a girl from his own tribe. Uh, second time he married another girl, this, uh, this woman. Uh, uh, he, he, she is the, her second wife, 29 years uh, his senior, and from another tribe, from my tribe, she is Persian, the first wife uh, of. Uh, uh, in was, was Turk, she is Persian, and she used to be a student in Muhammad Damandi's school that I will uh, be talking about in a, in, in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, both of his wives uh, helped him, uh, but the second wife, uh, who is still alive, she's about, uh, I think, about 70 or 65 or so, uh, she is working with Damandi Foundation at the time and, you know, trying to. Uh, uh, had, had uh, poor uh, children to study or, you know, uh, organizing cultural events or uh, uh, similar ac activities. Uh, in regard to education, Muhammad Rahman Bey started uh, to, to, you know, to convince uh, authorities that the reason that pe this, these people, uh, you know, they, they are easily um, motivated to um, to produce, organize a new riot is because these these people are poor and because these people are illiterate. If you make them literate, they would be more easy to more more accessible. You can talk to them. When they are illiterate, you cannot talk to them. They are in the mountains, you know, and they are rough. They are you know angry. So there is no uh, reason that they they accept to talk about uh, matters with them. Uh, he started his project, but he failed because you see that you know the, the living the pastoral life was so hard that city teachers would not endure it. So he came to the conclusion, the very important conclusion, that this project can only uh, uh, be successful if you choose, you, uh, you you create, you nurture your teachers from the people who have uh, who themselves have a pastoral life. Uh, so he uh, created a large establishment uh, in the uh, uh, first province of the one in, in the city of Shiraz. Uh, does anybody know about the city of Shiraz? Here? Yeah. Yeah, Shiraz. All right. Shiraz is a, a city, a, a large city in, in South of Iran, a city where uh, the, the greatest poets of Iran, uh, Hafez, Sadi, and many, many more uh, have been living in. And uh, it, it was near the place where Bahman Begi himself was born. All right. Uh, so he uh, started uh, educating young boys and girls uh, to become teachers. And he uh, after after five or ten days, uh, ten, ten years, the number of uh, these graduates became so high that there, there was, you know, they, they were confronted with an oversupply. So they exported uh, these young teachers to, to nearby regions. And after five or ten, ten more years, uh, again there was an oversupply of, of teachers. So. They were sent to the farthest, to the you know, to the border of Azerbaijan, border of uh, to the Kurdistan, to to Kerman, to other regions in Iran. It was very intriguing that those people, uh, you know, in a matter of only two decades, those people who were you know almost illiterate, they were you know harsh, they were even uh, uh, you know they they, they were uh, unready uh, to to start to talk, you know, the government officials were unable to talk to them. Now, after only two decades, these people were exporting teachers to other parts of Iran. And uh, he didn't uh, stay there. Bahman Begin had a special uh, uh, view toward women. Uh, yeah, he wanted uh, women to be modern. But he was very sensitive about moral issues. You know, this is the uh, this is the this seems to be a paradox. Yes, because because uh, you know, uh, an uh, undeniable aspect of modernism 
or modern, modern woman is that, you know, uh, uh, is the slogan that, that women, uh, that woman owns her body. All right, Obama maybe was very, very sensitive, very, very traditional. So he only accepted one aspect of, uh, uh, two minutes, really? Sorry, it's already 15. Oh. Uh, yeah, please do keep the timetable because then we have the final closing ceremony. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He uh, had, uh, you know, so he uh, tried to convince people that they should educate not only their boys but almost also their girls. And one strategy of him to, in, in order to do so was to. Uh, uh, convince people that if you send your uh, daughters to my schools, they might be teachers. If they become teachers, they would have a salary. And that, that was very important for people who were very, very poor. They were you know, in need of food. They have you know, problems in, in, in supplying their basic needs, in, 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 uh, uh, in meeting their, their basic needs. So he had, you know, after two decades, he had more about 1,000 uh, female teachers. It was very important, and change it, it itself by itself changed. You know, uh, it was a great attitude change in my region. Uh, he also another program was uh, midwifery because at that time many women would die at uh, you know at uh, you know while giving birth. So he decided again, he mm -hmm. conducted the same program. He accepted uh, uh, you know, girls from the region uh, to his school, and there they, they had a you know, pre preliminary, uh, uh, they received a preliminary education on the midwifery, then they were sent to the most remote uh, parts of the region. You know, the region is highly mountainous, it is not easy to live if you have said you would see that this is a. I, I didn't understand that my region is a you know geographically it is a different place. By, but now uh, I can see that living there is not easy and was not easy. So these these girls uh, would contribute in, in reducing the rate of uh, maternity maternity casualty uh, very much. And uh, this is a, an image I took uh, from him. He was a very clever man. Every man that I talked to, I have talked to, uh, have told me that if if he saw a man uh, or a woman now, uh, and and uh, he, he met him or her in, in ten years, he would know everything about the last conversation. My father was was uh, one of his uh, you know when when he was uh, seventeen years old, he became a teacher. My aunt became a teacher. My uncle became a teacher, uh, and there, there were many people in my families, and all of them have told me, you know, wonderful stories that, that he knew everything about everyone. And another ability that he had was, was, was that he knew who can do better. And in, and in this sense, he was uh, called uh, by his, uh, his uh, students, his teachers, you know, the teachers are now in Right. Sorry. Uh, all right. Yeah. In their, their 50s or 60s or even 70s, they are known. Uh, and uh, they call him the legendary director general. So thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for keeping the timetable, but you you know how yeah, conferences know, happens. You know, yeah, yeah. we can talk hours and hours, but we need to fit into the time. It's all right. It's all right. Excellent. One one question, sir. One very yeah. quick question. Now, uh, is it getting better? I mean, the situation of women in Iraq. We've been hearing a lot about it, we've been reading a lot, the fields demonstrate a lot, and I want to hear some good news in terms of the situation advancing. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the, the point is that, you know, the situation uh, of, of women in Iran, it is getting better. But the point is that uh -huh. many of the things that we hear is not the first happening at the professor at the University of Tehran.